ಸ್ಥಾಪಕಾಚ ಧರ್ಮಸ್ವರ್ವಧರ್ಮಸ್ವರೂಪಿಣೆ ಅವತಾರವರಿಷ್ಠಾಯ ರಾಮಕೃಷ್ಣಾಯ ತೇ ನಮಃ ಯಥಾಗ್ನೈರ್ದಾಹಿಕಾಶಕ್ತಿ ರಾಮಕೃಷ್ಣೇ ಸ್ಥಿತಿಯ ಸರ್ವಿದ್ಯಾಸ್ವರೂಪಣಮ್ಯಹಂ ನಮ ಶ್ರೀಯತಿಜಾಯ ವಿವೇಕಾನಂದಸೂರ ಸಚ್ಚಿತ್ಸುಖಸ್ವರೂಪಾಯ ಸ್ವಾಮಿಪಹಾರಿಣೆ ಗುಡ್ ಈವ್ನಿಂಗ್ ಫ್ರೆಂಡ್ಸ್ ಟುಡೇ ವಿ ಆರ್ ಗೋಯಿಂಗ್ ಟು ಡಿಸ್ಕಸ್ ಅಬೌಟ್ devotion to god as a supreme path to god realization as shown by shri ramakrishna shri ramakrishna accepts there are as many fates so many path it means that through any path a man can realize god but chiefly these paths to god realization are divided into four categories and they are called margas jnana marga bhakti marga karma marga and yoga marga these are the four margas and these are not watertight compartments first of all a person may be a gnani gnana marga is a part of uh, um, philosophy we can say intellectual philosophy not only a dry intellectual philosophy it tries to find one's own self and identify his own self with that supreme self identifying one self with that supreme self by negating this world that is the path of this jnana marga and secondly the bhakti marga which talks about god or the supreme brahman as an external entity as an object a devotee thinks of god as an object of his love essentially there is no difference between this bhakti marga and jnana marga in jnana marga a person sees that brahman as his own self whereas in bhakti marga the devotee projects the same self outside and sees that brahman as god himself seeing subjectively is called jnana marga seeing god objectively is bhakti marga and it is easier for us that is what shri ramakrishna says and other two margas are there karma marga and yoga marga are there as per shri ramakrishna in this kali yuga bhakti marga is very very easier many acharyas have dealt with bhakti marga and these systems bhakti marga has been coded and made it as a philosophy by narada himself in his naradiya bhakti sutras there is a famous statement naradiya kalau bhakti hi in kali yuga this bhakti as shown by narada is ಮೋಕ್ಷೋಪಾಯೋಹ್ಯರುತ್ತಮಃ ಮೋಕ್ಷ ಉಪಾಯ ದಿಸ್ ಇಸ್ ದ ಉಪಾಯ ದಿಸ್ ಇಸ್ ದ ಮೀನ್ಸ್ ವಾಟ್ ಟೈಪ್ ಆಫ್ ಮೀನ್ಸ್ ಇಟ್ ಇಸ್ ಅನುತ್ತಮ ಮೀನ್ಸ್ ಅನುತ್ತಮ ಮೀನ್ಸ್ ಯಸ್ಮಾತ್ ಉತ್ತಮೋ ನಾಸ್ತಿ ತತ್ ಅನುತ್ತಮ ಸೊ ದಿಸ್ ಇಸ್ ದ ಸುಪ್ರೀಂ ಪಾತ್ ದರ್ ಇಸ್ ನಥಿಂಗ್ ಸುಪೀರಿಯರ್ ದನ್ ದಿಸ್ ಇಸ್ ಅವೈಲಬಲ್ ಸೊ ದಿಸ್ ಭಕ್ತಿ ಮಾರ್ಗ ಇಸ್ ವೆರಿ ಸುಪ್ರೀಂ ಪಾತ್ ವೆನ್ ಎವರ್ ಭಕ್ತಿ ಮಾರ್ಗ ಇಸ್ ಟಾಕ್ಡ್ ಅಬೌಟ್ we remember a child who is an example of all devotion prahlada in bhagavata his life is narrated he was a small boy 
and his father was Hiranyakashipu a demon king and he wanted himself to be worshiped not bhagwan but prahlada worshiped mahavishnu and when mahavishnu appeared before prahlada he did not ask for anything mahavishnu himself asked him to ask for some boons he did not want to have any other boon than remembrance of god himself this is the greatest example of a devotee there is a great example for a gnani also in the upanishads we can see a small boy nachiketas who is full of vairagya and viveka he did not want to know anything else he did not want to aspire after the things of this world but he wanted to have that brahma gnana alone he is the gnani to the core whereas this prahlada is the bhakta to the core both of them had the same minds anything of this world they did not want anything of the heavenly world they did not want they wanted only one thing that is the supreme goal so th- from here we can understand there are some devotees who did not want to have anything external that kind of bhakti is the supreme devotion nishkama bhakti it is called para bhakti that is what we call it whereas there is something else also some other kind of devotion devotion of the ordinary people which is called sakama bhakti ordinary people want many things they impose their demands on god i want this i want that so many demands is a kind of trade they do with god but great people do not do that in tamil nadu we had 12 alvars alvars are devotees of mahavishnu of that one person is tondaridi podi alvar he in his one of his poems he writes o oh krishna i do not want anything of this world i do not want even the lordship of indra loka or heavenly planes who will want that even if i get that i do not want i want only one thing i want to talk about you only pachai ma malai pol meeni pavalavai kamalachangan achuta amarare ayudam kolunde ichuvai tavira yan po indira lokam maalum achuvai perinum vende narangaman agurulane that is what we, he said these great people have understood the real value intrinsic value of god himself god is the creator of this world and this universe this universe the intrinsic value of this universe is definitely lesser if not zero than the intrinsic value of god if we attach value to this universe then we will be bound to this universe we should know what is this universe therefore only we, in jnana yoga they say viveka viveka is a kind of discriminating intellect it will that intellect will be applied towards the things of this world a person with good intellect will research things of the world whether the things of the worlds are permanent or not he will try to find out in this world nothing is permanent that he will come to a conclusion then he will go to his guru to find out what is that which is permanent by knowing which he can know everything else he will try to go to his guru that is what is said in the upanishad pariksha lokan karma chitan brahmano nirvedamayat 
ನಾಸ್ತಿ ಅಕೃತಕೃತೇನ ಇನ್ ದಿಸ್ ವರ್ಲ್ಡ್ ದರ್ ಇಸ್ ನಥಿಂಗ್ ನೋ ಎಂಟಿಟಿ ಇಸ್ ಅವೈಲಬಲ್ ವಿಚ್ ಇಸ್ ನಾಟ್ ಮೇಡ್ ಆನ್ ಒನ್ ಪರ್ಟಿಕ್ಯುಲರ್ ಡೇ ಸಮಥಿಂಗ್ ವಿಚ್ ಇಸ್ ಮೇಡ್ ವಿಲ್ ಬಿ ಡಿಸ್ಟ್ರಾಯ್ಡ್ ಆಲ್ಸೋ ಆನ್ ದ ಅದರ್ ಡೇ ಎವ್ರಿ ಬರ್ತ್ ಡೇ ವಿಲ್ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಇಟ್ಸ್ ಡೇಟ್ ಆಫ್ ಡೆತ್ ಆಲ್ಸೋ so therefore this entire universe is not at all permanent therefore he gets that vairagya viveka having known the intrinsic value of this world to be zero he comes back he wants to know only god he wants to realize god there is an example in the vaishnava acharyas list one Sanatan Goswami was there. He is a devotee of Krishna. At all the times he will be thinking of Krishna only, meditating on Krishna only. He has seen this world as Krishna himself, nothing else for him. Drishtim bhaktimayim krutva pashyet krishnamayam jagat. Like that, he sees this world as the manifestation of Krishna himself. wherever he sees krishna 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 whatever he hears it is only krishna for him so nothing else is there for him so he was in the krishna consciousness at all the times from his eyes water was flowing like anything because he was immersed in that bliss there was a person who came to that sanatan goswami that person was tormented by the world samsara and he required so much wealth to come out of his problems somebody suggested that he has to go to sanatan goswami to get that wealth so he has come to this sanatan goswami sanatan goswami was sitting only thinking of krishna he did not know anything of this matter but this fellow came and caught hold of him and he was praying intensely to him finally when sanatan goswami came to the normal consciousness he asked the person for what he has come to him to that that person said about his uh, worldly torments and he begged him to give him some wealth so that he can successfully run his family but sanatan goswami did not know what is wealth etc later he realized that he wanted this only worldly wealth that is money he wanted like that he realized then he said oh you want only money sanatan goswami was sitting in a house it is a hut and he told that person outside the hut there is a small stone like thing you please take this and go he said this person was a little bit worried he did not know he said sir, sir i want to have lot of wealth but you are telling me to take this uh, stone and go what is this he asked then sanatan goswami said that is called sparsha mani a touch stone you touch anything with the stone and that thing will become gold you will get lot of wealth you go he said that stone was lying outside his house uncared for all these days he never cared about it it was lying there that person also took that one and went away on the way his mind started working that is the purpose of satsanga you see even small amount of satsanga makes him to think in the right direction that satsanga is very very important he thinks what the sanatan goswami was doing he was simply crying crying in bliss he was in ananda he did not even care about this touch stone why he did not care about this touch stone there should be some wealth grand enough to think that this touch stone is a futile thing he has thrown away this touch stone 
so there should be a grand 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 really grand wealth should be there like that his mind started working he came back to sanatan goswami and he asked for that and sanatan goswami gives him krishna upadesha so that is the great thing god is greater than anything else of this world the same thing is said in chandogya upanishad that same atma or paramatma pratyagatma which we call it that is available within our own selves nihitam guhayam that is said isn't it tamakrata pashyati vita shokah dhatu prasadat mahimanam atmanah so that atma is nihitam guhayam it is there inside everybody chandogya upanishad says people are walking from here to there this side to that side everywhere they go and come they did not know that under the, their feet a great wealth fortune is there they did not know and these people are walking along this path in the same way we also every day go to our own atman and come back without knowing that there is atman inside us yatha hiranya nidhim nihitam akshetrajnaha upari upari sancharantah na vindeyuhu so upari upari sancharantah they walk left right center everywhere akshetrajnaha what is there in the uh, earth they did not know hiranya nidhim nihitam akshetrajnaha hiranya nidhi is there gold fortune is there they did not know they were walking here and there because they did not know they did not get that na vindeyuhu evameva imaha sarvaha prajaha aharaha gachantyah in the same way people also daily day in and day out they go to this atman but they did not look towards it why because their vision is always external they do not see what is there in because the revision is external they catch this ephemeral world only they want this ephemeral world. they see they they perceive this ephemeral world only ephemeral worlds are not real therefore it is said here anrutena hi pratyudaha anruta it is not real so in the same way to attain to that god we also should turn ourselves from this ephemeral world that is what was said in the katopanishad avrutta chakshahu like that and to catch that god we have to give this devotion to him devotion is the best way bhakti is the best way to catch that shri ramakrishna gives one example here to catch fish we throw the bait and by the order of the bait fish comes to it and eats it and it is caught in the same way to catch this god the bait is the devotion as grand is this devotion as deep is your devotion so easy for god to come to us there are three types of attractions shri ramakrishna says if these three kinds of attractions are put together joined together then god will come definitely wife's attraction for husband that is the primary attraction then mother's love for her child and worldly man's attraction for the things of the world if these three kinds of attractions are joined together towards god then god cannot hide himself any longer that is called bhakti in yana marga a person requires to do the vichara always he has to be so careful he cannot be like an ordinary person he cannot 
allow the everyday life around him to impact give an impact on himself he has to be very very careful whereas in case of a devotee that is not there whatever profession they are in the entire thing can be converted to converted as devotional service there are so many examples in the bhagavata krishna's mother devaki was there she is an ordinary milkmaid but because of her own devotion she could capture krishna she could beat krishna she could feed krishna everything she can do one interesting story in bhagavata is there his name is one person's name is dadhi bandaha he is a playmate of krishna he somehow knew krishna's greatness he was playing here and there here and there devaki was searching for krishna and he provided some secret place for krishna to hide he asked the krishna to hide inside a pot a pot was put over shri krishna and on the pot this dadi banda goes and sits devaki was searching for krishna because she wanted to uh, chastise him for his uh, pranks so this dadi banda hid him inside this pot and thereby saved krishna later devaki was searching for krishna and she went away thinking that krishna is not there in that place dadi banda should get up from that pot and let krishna outside but he did not he did not get up from that pot he was sitting there itself he told krishna oh krishna i will get up only if you allow if you grant me moksha if you grant me devotion to you then only i will let you outside otherwise you are gone you have to be here only like that he said what a grand faith he had krishna also yielded to him this is the nature of god if you go towards god one step god will come towards you 10 steps that is the thing devotion does not require any qualification you have to be you, you have to spend so much money no not required you have to read so many books no not required you have to be born in this family no not required you have to be a man no not required you have to be a strong person physically no not required you can be anybody to have devotion no qualification is there for being a devotee in the bhagavata there is a shloka to this effect it summarizes different types of devotees and shows all of them are very 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 ordinary people but because of their devotion they became very great in ramayana we see a boatman who takes shri rama across the river ganga his name is guha he is a vyadha he is a hunter professional hunter himself he hunts and eats what kind of devotion he had for rama rama could count him as one of his brothers in bhagavata we see dhruva dhruva is a very very young lad maybe of 6 uh, years old so even age is not a qualification he was a great devotee he became a devotee of krishna uh, mahavishnu and he got boons directly from him in the bhagavata itself we see gajendra gajendra was elephant and when it was caught by a crocodile in the waters it could not come out at long last it called upon shri hari and he also came to save him even a human body is not required to be a devotee that is what is shown here 
There was one lady in the Bhagavata, very old lady. She could not even stand. He had hunchback, very old lady, but she was daily giving sandalwood paste to Krishna. So even beauty or youth is not a qualification for being a devotee. We know about Sudhama, a friend of Sri Krishna, who came to Sri Krishna with only a puffed rice to be offered to him. Very poor he was, but still he got the devotion to Sri Krishna. So wealth is not a qualification for being a devotee. Vidura was there. He is a son of of a very ordinary woman. Duryodhana wanted Krishna to come to his palace, but Krishna did not go there. He preferred to stay in the hut of this Vidura. Vidura also, because of the exuberance of devotion, he wanted to give offer bananas to Krishna. He peeled the peels and threw out the banana and gave the peels to Krishna. He did not know what he was doing in his devotion. Krishna also happily accepted those peels and he ate them off. So therefore, the birth is not a qualification for being a devotee. Kamsa's father was Ugrasena. Sena means army, Ugra means powerful army. Ugrasena by name, he, he was in his name only Ugrasena, but he was not powerful, he was powerless. He was put behind the bars by Kamsa himself, his own son. But he got the blessings of Sri Krishna. So, even Paurusha is not the qualification of being a devotee. Because God wants only Bhakti, 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 nothing else. Para Bhakti. Ahetuka Bhakti, Nishchala Bhakti. That is what is required. Bhaktiya Tushyati Kevalam Naya Gunaihi Bhakti Priyo Madhavaha. What is said? Vyadasya Acharanam Dhruvasya Cha Vayaha Vidya Gajendrasya Ka Kubjaya Kibunama Rupam Madhikam Kim Tat Sudhamno Dhanam Vamshaha Kaha Vidrasya Yadavapate he ugrasya kim paurusham bhaktiya tushyati kevalam natugunaihi bhakti priyo madhavaha. That is what is said. In another place it is said, Priyate amaliya bhaktiya harihi. Hari is happy only because of this bhakti. Amaliya bhaktiya, it is said. That one unmixed bhakti, highest devotion. Anyat sarvam vidam manam, anything else is useless. That is what is said here. So that kind of bhakti is to be practiced by everyone. That kind of bhakti will lead one to towards the goal. And to do that, who can do it? Only we have to do it. It should be within our reach. We should be able to do it. If we take one step towards God, God definitely will help us. He will come ten steps to, uh, towards us. That is what Sri Ramakrishna says. Something is preventing us from going towards Him. What is that preventing us to go towards Him? Our own samskaras. Our own samskaras are preventing us. We have to tend our samskaras. We have to create new samskaras in us. As long as we are having bad samskaras, we will not go towards God at all. Sri Krishna himself says that Namam Dushkritino Mudhaha Prapadyante Naradhamaha Namam Prapadyante They do not come towards me, he says. Why? Mayaya Apahritagnyanaha They are cheated by this world of existence. We call it as existence, but it is not existence at all. Therefore, it is called Maya. Maya ya apahrita jnanaha. Asuram bhavamashirutaha. So, that kind of uh, uh, people will not go towards God at all. So, bad subscribers, we have to uh, 
uh, redo, rework all of them. God himself is ready to help us. Even if we have bad samskaras, we should know that by the grace of God we can go towards him. All these bad samskaras will be removed once and for all. Krishna himself gives a solution for us. Apichet Sudurachāro Bhajate Māma Nanya Bhāk Sādhureva Samantabhyaha Like that he says. Even if we have got Sudurachāraha Our conduct is very very poor. Very bad. Even then, if we take refuge under him Sādhureva Samantabhyaha Like that he says. He, has, he will become a sadhu also. He has to be. Because in due course he will become a good person. So a person who does not have the good samskaras will not go towards God. On the other hand, a person who has got sukruti, good samskaras, they will go and worship God. Chaturvidhaha bhajante maam janaha sukruti no arjuna. So, who is having that sukruta? Who is having that good samskaras? will come towards God. So now we should know how to create good samskaras in us. There are so many means Sri Ramakrishna gives with which these good samskaras can be formed. These we call, can call it as weapons also. When bad comes, when our bad samskaras are going to grab us, we should be able to fight with that and to fight, we need to have so many weapons. So these are all the weapons. The first means which he gives is be detached. Be detached from this world. Be detached means um, not being without caring for this world. No, not that. Be detached in your mind. That is what is said. The detachment comes only in the mind, not in the physical plane. There was a man who had a cow and he tied the cow and he was dragging the cow to some other place. This cow did not want to come but he was trying to drag. On the way there two people came. One person started talking to the other person. Oh this cow is bound to this world, how this man is pulling, tying the cow and he is pulling the cow and going. Like that he exclaimed. The other person said, no, the cow is not bound. This man is bound. But the first person could not understand it. He asked for the explanation. Further, the second person said, go and cut that rope. He went and cut that rope. Immediately this cow started running in the opposite direction. Chasing that cow, this man also ran. There is an invisible link between the cow and the person which is pulling him towards the cow. That time only the second person said, see that invisible thread which is binding both. So this person is bound to that cow. What is that thread? That is called Asha. Asha Pasha Shatehi Baddaha Kama Krodha Varayadaha Ihante Kama Bhogartha Anyayen Artha Sanchayan is there, isn't it? So the detachment should come from the mind, not from the physical plane. In the Narada Bhakti Sutra it is said, Tattu Vishayatyagat. So when you, uh, that Vishayatyaga means when you renounce this, uh, things of the world from your mind. That is the meaning of it. To renounce this from the mind, Viveka is required. The first step for being detached is to discriminate between the real and the unreal. So discrimination is very very important. Anything that takes one towards the goal, towards God, that is to be taken. Anything that 
deviates oneself from God is to be shunned. That is the second means. The third means is do all your duty as worship to God. Yat karoshi yadashnasi yajjuhoshi dadasi yat yat tapasyasi kaunti yat kurushva madarpanam Whatever you do in this world, do it. There is no bar in that. But think that you are doing everything for God. Because when we do anything for God, we are not bound by the results of it. And that itself will release the bondages for us. When we perform any action for God, the action does not bind us. Otherwise, the actions will bind us. Yajnyarthat karmano nyatra loko yam karma bandhanaha. That is what is said. When you perform any action for God, you are not bound. So that is one of the weapons we have. Powerful weapons. We cannot run away from home. We have to do all our works. How to do that work without being bound? So this is the way. Do all the works and offer everything to God. The other next weapon is practice of Japa, Dhyana, Kirtana, doing bhajans. All these things are great help. Krishna himself says, Naham vasami vaikunte na yogi hridaye ravu manbhakta haitra gayanti tatra tishtami narada like that. So wherever devotees are singing the name of God, there God himself comes and stands and dances to the tunes of the devotee. Devotees can always think of those bhajan songs and relate oneself to God anytime at any place. And the next, next weapon we may, we may have is this surrendering. Self-surrender. Self-surrendering to God is very, very important. We have to do the sharanagati. There are two types of sharanagatis. Sri Ramakrishna talks about in his gospel. One is like monkey and another thing, another type of sharanagati like a cat. Baby monkey tightly hugs his mother. Wherever mother goes, it also goes. Like that, devotee also should hold on to God with all his might. That is the first type of self-surrender. The second type is this cat. Baby cat does not go anywhere. This mother cat takes it and puts somewhere else. And it lies there itself. It does not go away anywhere. Suppose if any discomfort comes, any danger comes, it simply shouts mew mew. Immediately from wherever it is, the mother cat comes and saves it. So that kind of surrender is also expected. In this present days probably we can have both types of sharanagati. We can ask we can be at the mercy of God and we can hold on to God also. And the next one is called Prathana or Prayer. Prayers can do a lot. Prayers bring down the blessings of God immediately. Another one weapon to modify the samskaras is the Satsanga. Meeting sadhus and being with them is a great help for us. Tad labhyate pitat krapiya eva, that is what is said in Narada Bhakti Sutra. If any person gets the sadhu sangha, that is also because of the blessings of God. In Vivek Chodamani, it is said, Manushyatvam, Mumukshatvam, Mahapurushasam, Samshrayaha, like that. Durlabham traime vaitat devanugraha hetukam. These three things are because of the um, grace of God. 
ಎ ಪರ್ಸನ್ ಗೆಟ್ಸ್ ವಾಟ್ ಆರ್ ದೇ ಮನುಷ್ಯತ್ವ ಮುಮುಕ್ಷುತ್ವ ಮಹಾಪುರುಷ ಸಂಶ್ರಯ ಲೈಕ್ ದಟ್ ದಟ್ ಮಹಾಪುರುಷ ಸಂಶ್ರಯ ಈಸ್ ಕಾಲ್ಡ್ ದ ಸತ್ಸಂಗ ದಟ್ ಸತ್ಸಂಗ ಒನ್ ಗೆಟ್ಸ್ ಬಿಕಾಸ್ ಆಫ್ ದ ಗ್ರೇಸ್ ಆಫ್ ಗಾಡ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಆಲ್ವೇಸ್ ಟಾಕ್ ಅಬೌಟ್ ಗಾಡ್ ದಟ್ ಈಸ್ ಅನದರ್ ಥಿಂಗ್ ಆಲ್ವೇಸ್ ಹಿಯರ್ ಅಬೌಟ್ ಹಿಮ್ ಥಿಂಕ್ ಅಬೌಟ್ ಹಿಮ್ ಡೋಂಟ್ ಥಿಂಕ್ ಎನಿಥಿಂಗ್ ಎಲ್ಸ್ ದಟ್ ವಾಸ್ ದ ಅಲ್ಟಿಮೇಟ್ ಥಿಂಗ್ ವೆನ್ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಡಿಸಪಿಯರ್ಡ್ ಫ್ರಮ್ ದೆಮ್ these gopis were crying for him they did not see anything else tan manaskaha tadalapaha tad vicheshtaha tadatmikah tad gunanyeva gayantyah natmagaram sasmaruhu they did not remember their own selves they did not remember their own houses they were thinking only about krishna they were talking only about him they were acting what he was doing they became him itself tat gunani eva gayanti ha they were singing the praises of him only they did not want to hear anything else when they forget about him it becomes a great pain for them tat visparane parama vyakulata iti they said in narada bhakti sutra in the same way they all these gopis were thinking only about him 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 like that this is also one of the ways in fact bhakti or devotion it is the path that is means as well as the goal also by practicing bhakti what we will get we will get bhakti only in fact in the case of jnana by pra- practicing jnana marga what one will get he will get mukti so the path that is means as well as the end goal are different whereas in the case of bhakti marga bhakti is the means also the goal also so when we practice this devotion we have already attained the goal also so this bhakti marga is the supreme marga supreme path for self realization for the realization of god i thank you all for giving me this uh, opportunity talk to talk to you all about this thank you very much om shanti 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 hari om tat sat shri ram krishna arpanamastu